Hey everybody, today is 27th and we are doing a fabulous job. We are left with only one topic that is nothing but interface python with MySQL. Then why are we waiting for? Let's revise it. We studied python and we studied one database that is nothing but MySQL. But we don't show our database to everybody. That's why through program we manage that database. That only we need to study how to handle databases through python programming. For that here are the steps. Let's check out one by one. Obviously to write program we need some IDE. So we will start the python. We are going to connect two different softwares python with mysql. For that we need one connector. The name of the connector is mysql.connector. So with the help of import statement we are going to import this module which will give us different functionality for the connectivity. You can see here this name is little longer and complicated. So to make it simple and small we can give alias to it. Just like mysql we can give this as keyword. So now the command will look like import mysql.connector as sql con. This is nothing but an identifier. We know some modules will be inbuilt but some we need to install. This mysql connector also we need to install that we can do using pip before using it. It's a command to install any module. Alright let's proceed to the next step. Now we are establishing the connection between mysql and python. For that we will be using connect function of this module mysql.connector. Connect function takes four parameters the first one is host second one is user the third is password and fourth one is the database we need to just keep in mind host will be local host and user will be root these two values will be fixed but what about the password this is the password which you have entered while installing mysql software no need to worry about these three parameters generally it will be mentioned in the question now let's check out the fourth parameter it is database on which database you have to work that name you will be mentioning here it is an optional parameter if you are not working with database you can skip it but generally we work with the database because tables will get created in the database itself so with the connect function we will be creating one connection object so this is nothing but an identifier let's give some name to it that is mydb with that step connection got established between python and mysql now let's move ahead we need one cursor which will process the records row by row for that we are going to use cursor function obviously this cursor function will work on the connection object so look at the syntax connection object dot cursor it doesn't take any parameter so with that we are going to create one cursor object let's give it a name cursor Connection got established and we are ready to process the records too. But how we will get the records for that we will write the query. Hope you remember all the queries. If not I would suggest you to go through this video in which we have cover entire mysql in one shot. We will be writing query and using execute function we will be executing it. We know that cursor is going to process that records row by row that's why it works with the cursor object. So look at one simple example cursor dot execute select star from employee. So after the execution of the query we will get the result set. It means we will get the records. Now there is a category of fetch function which will decide how many records you want. You want all the records or you want limited records. In that category the first is fetch all. It will fetch all the records that too in the form of list of tuples but if you don't want all the records there is a option of fetch one it will only extract or fetch one record and if there are no records it will return none there is one more option with the help of which you can extract some specific number of records the name is fetch many you will be providing the parameter n that is nothing but the number of records Look at the syntax. This function works with the cursor object. Fetch all, fetch one and fetch many. There is one more property associated with the cursor object that is called as row count which will count the number of rows retrieved by the cursor. So this is how it will work. It will give the count of the records. 
all right we know when we establish the connection we need to close it for that we will be using close function which works with the connection object all right now let's try to write one program by assembling all the steps together here we are writing a program which will show the databases so the first step is to import mysql dot connector second step is to connect third step is to create cursor object these three steps will be same after that in the fourth step we will execute the query using cursor object followed by fetching the records here we are fetching all the records and printing it so look at the output we will get the list of tuples it is a list of tuples of all the databases because the query is show databases you might have noticed that the four parameter we skipped because we are not working on any specific database the same concept goes with show tables now we cannot skip database because the tables are in the database itself this query is important select query as we discuss the first three steps will be fixed importing module using connect function and creating cursor object this step is also fixed executing the query here we are displaying all the records from the emp table with fetch all we got all the records and one by one we are printing it look at the output we are getting the tuples if you want to fetch one record you can use fetch one if you want specific number of records that also you can write it we have mentioned three that's why we are getting three records i would suggest to write these steps on paper and practice it ultimately you have to write it in the exam now let's check out how to write insert query these three steps are same hope you remember the insert query insert into table and here are the values make a note of it inside the query we will be using single quote that's why when you are writing query make use of triple quotes then there will be no doubt between single quote double quote and the triple quotes otherwise you will get into trouble so include query in triple quotes and write single quotes inside all right with the insert query we are changing something in the database so to save that changes permanently we will be using one command that is nothing but commit it reflect the changes in the database it is one of the tcl language it is nothing but transaction control language we already discussed two types of language ddl and dml this is the third one it works with the database connection object because we are changing into the database hope you understood this explanation you might have noticed we did not use any fetch function why because with the help of select only you will get some result set right not with the insert command so whenever there is select there will be fetch functions if you feel writing query here with the execute function is getting complicated you can store it in one variable and then write the name of the variable in the execute function because sometimes the query will be too long some of the important queries we discuss like select insert now let's discuss update to these three steps are fixed here is one update query make sure you are enclosing the query in triple quotes after executing we are committing it so that the changes will reflect in the database in the same way we can write the delete query too make sure you know the format of delete query don't get confused we know that these three steps are same here is the delete query delete from student personal where roll number equals to 104 let's execute this query and commit now let's try to understand how to create table insert records into it and display so here are the three steps now let's write the query to create table create table product product id product name price let's execute this query table got created it's time to insert data into it so we are inserting two records not many this we generally write in the form of loop because many records we need to enter this is just to understand the concept insert into table name product values first value second value and third value now let's write one query with the help of which we can display the records of the table so here is the select query select star from product we are displaying all the records with the help of select you get the result set so whenever there is a select query then you will be using one of the fetch function to decide how many records you need to fetch here we are using fetch all 
and using for loop we are printing records one by one look at the output we are getting it into the tuples here we are using insert command it means you are changing something into the table so you should use commit so that the changes will get saved permanently finally we will close the connection commit and close will work with the connection object that is nothing but my db in our case you can give any name but try to give meaningful so that you will not get confused execute and fetch all function works with the cursor object we understood that when we want to enter many records we will be using loop and to enter records generally we will input the data because directly we cannot write values of each record we will take the input and using loop we will enter the records into the table so how to pass this input to the query that is nothing but parameterize query and in the program we understood whenever we design the query it is in the form of string so if we want to format the string we will be using the concept of formatting the string for formatting two options we can use first the old style with the percent symbol and the new style with the format function if you already know how to format the string you will easily understand this wherever you want to place the string for that you will be writing percent s and the name of the variable we mention in the form of tuple followed by the percent symbol the same logic we are going to apply here also so look at one simple query insert into product values there are three values we need to provide so we are writing three times percent s after completing the codes we need to provide the variable name don't forget to write the percent symbol so here is pid p name and price the values will get replaced at the place where we have mentioned percent s in this way with these values one record will get inserted into the table why we are doing all this because we need to insert many records so we will be taking the input and providing the variable name with the loop then we can insert many records into the table so this is how it will look like you are taking the input and passing the variable name with that concept you can write any query here is the update query and here is the delete query if there is only one value you can skip these brackets now let's understand the another way of formatting that is nothing but using format function this also you will easily understand if you would have used it for formatting of the string this function is associated with the string so this is nothing but r string then using dot apply this method format in this case wherever you want to replace this value you will be writing one place holder that place holder is indicated by the curly brackets it means what 101 will get replace here look at the query now select star from product where pid equals to 101 if that value you are taking in a variable write the variable name so use format method of the string and write the place holder then with that concept you can write any query here is update query insert query as well as delete wherever you want to replace the value write the place holder note one thing wherever there is a string value you will be enclosing that place holder in the single quote or in the double quote but always to write query use triple quotes to avoid complications place holders can be anywhere look at this update query update product set price equals to this and pid equals to this so the first value always will get replaced at the first place holder and the second value will get replaced at the second place holder order and the sequence you need to maintain Hope you understood the whole logic of creating the connection between MySQL and Python. Then let's solve the question from the sample paper. Generally, you will be getting four mark question based on the connectivity. Here is question number five. The name of the table is stationary and the name of the database is item DB. In the table, there are four fields: item number, item name, price, and quantity. Note down the data types too. Let's read the question. Here we need to write python function the name of the function is add and display so what this function will be doing to input details of an item and store it in a table so this is the first task we need to insert the record of an item all right let's continue and read further 
the function should then retrieve and display all records from the stationary table where price is greater than 120 so based on condition we need to display for that we will be writing select query to insert item we will be writing insert query look at the details for connectivity we have host we have user we have password and the database name is also mentioned try to recall all the steps and if you can do it yourself go ahead with the hope you could do it if not also no problem let's work out here we cannot execute this code directly in the vs code because we don't have the table all right according to the instruction this is the function write exactly same name as mentioned in the question we know the first step is to import mysql connector and here is the alias to it what's the next step we need to use connect function it takes four parameter host user password it was mentioned in the question only you need to add database that is also mentioned item db well done you know the third step to create cursor object so here it is try to give meaningful identify so that you will not get confused what's the next step correct we need to write the query and execute it but before that we need to take the input so here is the input item number item name price and quantity Based on the data type, we have used this function integer, float and integer. Item name is string. That's why we did not write any function because by default it will be string. Now let's write the query. It's a parameterized query. For that I am using format function. So it will look like this. Insert into stationary values. We need to pass four values. That's why four placeholders we are going to mention here. The second value is string that's why it is enclosed in a single quote. I think the name of the table is in capital letter so please change it. In this way the query got created now it's time to execute. Execute function works with cursor object so let's write it. We are changing something into the table so we will be using commit function which works with the connection object it is nothing but mydb. In this way the first task of inserting data into the table is done. What's the next task? We need to display the record based on the condition. And what's the condition? Price should be greater than 120. So how you will write the select query? Let me know. Alright this is how the query will look like. Select star from stationery where price is greater than 120. Using execute function we will execute the query now we will get the result set. How many records you want you can decide it. For that you can use any one of the fetch function. Here we will use fetch all because we need all the records. Fetch all function works with the cursor object. Then using for loop you can iterate over that records and print one by one. So with that we have done with the second task too. Hope you understood this explanation. If you want to practice some more questions based on this topic, there is a video you can go through it. Even you can go through this video too. Here also there are lot of questions are covered based on this topic. With that we successfully completed the entire portion of class 12. Hope you found this revision series helpful. Let me know your reviews and don't forget to share it with your friends. Tomorrow is the last day for the preparation. So whichever topic you feel you need to revise, you can do it yourself. Otherwise, you will be getting one short video for the complete portion of class 12. I would suggest you to stay confident, study hard. I will see you in the next video.